My name is Magda Havis, and this is a short eight-minute presentation entitled Cell Phones and Cigarettes, What Do They Have in Common? It is my belief that cell phones are the cigarettes of the 21st century. Do you find this picture disturbing? What about this one? What do cell phones and cigarettes have in common? They are both produced by multi-billion dollar companies. Cigarettes and possibly cell phones may have addictive qualities. Both products have been linked to illness, including cancers. And the industries deny health concerns associated with their products. Tobacco death toll could reach 1 billion this century, study finds. In 2006, 1.25 billion people smoked cigarettes and 1.4 million died from cancer due to smoking. Today, 4 billion people use cell phones worldwide and even a small increased health risk could have devastating consequences with so many users. Advertising encourages use of cigarettes and cell phones. Here we have ads that appeal to men. Ads that appeal to women. You've come a long way, baby. Ads that appeal to teenagers. The cell phone ad is encouraging teenagers to stay connected by text messaging in place of face-to-face -face contact. And even ads that appeal to children, which is perhaps the most disturbing. Why would a cigarette company want their advertising to be associated with children's cartoons if it wasn't to sell cigarettes to children? And if the cartoon ad doesn't work, what about licorice-flavored cigarettes? We see similar enticements with cell phones that resemble teddy bears or cartoon characters. This encourages children to ask mommy and daddy to buy them a cell phone, as if it were a toy. Would you buy your child a toy that emitted microwave radiation? Does this seem too young to use a cell phone? And if you think that's silly, what about the pregnant woman lying in bed talking on her cell phone with a portable computer on her lap near the fetus? Warning. Using a mobile phone while pregnant can seriously damage your baby. Study of 13,000 children exposes link between use of handsets and later behavioral problems. This appeared in the independent newspaper in 2008. Medical authorities recommend that pregnant women refrain from smoking, drinking alcohol, and taking certain types of drugs. Why do they not also include warnings about using wireless technology and being exposed to microwave radiation? What about preconception? How many people do you know who keep their phones in their hip or back pocket? Cell phone radiation affects sperm. The key findings of this report published in 2008 are shown in the next slide. Effect of cell phone use on sperm parameters. In green, we have men who did not use a cell phone. In blue, those who used a cell phone less than two hours each day. In red, those who used a cell phone between two and four hours each day. And in black, those who used a cell phone longer than four hours each day. There was no difference in semen volume, liquefaction time, pH, and viscosity with cell phone use. However, men who used a cell phone longer each day had lower sperm count, reduced sperm motility, reduced sperm viability, and fewer sperm with normal morphology. In other words, men who used a cell phone for longer periods had fewer sperm, and these sperm looked abnormal, they died more quickly, and moved more slowly. Once information in questioning the safety of these products became public, the manufacturers began to examine ways of reducing exposure. Cigarettes were given a filter tip. Cell phones were paired with headsets. Why are we concerned about cell phones? Because they emit microwave radiation, the same type of radiation generated by your microwave oven to heat food. Indeed, guidelines in many countries are based on a heating effect. If this radiation doesn't heat your tissue, it is assumed safe. This assumption is outdated and not supported by the science. Dr. Leonard Hardell and co-workers reviewed the scientific literature on cell phone use in tumors and produced this report in 2009. Here are the key findings from the study. After 10 years of cell phone use, there was an increase in ipsilateral tumors. These tumors are the, on the same side of the head where one holds a cell phone. Gliomas or brain tumors increased 90%. Acoustic neuromas increased 60%. This is the nerve associated with hearing. Uveal melanomas, tumor of the eye, increased 300%. 
Who is at highest risk? Those who were under the age of 20 when they first started using a cell phone. For them, the increase in ipsilateral tumor after 10 years was 420%. These three images show the depth of microwave penetration into the head of an adult on the left, the head of a 10-year-old child in the middle, and the head of a 5-year-old child on the right. The ye yellow area at the bottom of each picture is the location of the cell phone by the ear. Why are children more vulnerable to cell phone radiation? Because children absorb more energy than adults from the same phone, and the energy penetrates more deeply. Tumors in the midbrain are more deadly than those in the temporal lobe, and the midbrain tumors are likely to become more prevalent with deeper penetration of the microwaves. Children's cells are reproducing more quickly than adults, which makes cancers more deadly. Children's immune system is not as well developed as adults, hence children are less effective at fighting cancerous growth. As a growing number of children use cell phones, they have a longer potential for lifetime exposure than adults. For these reasons, it is critical that children under the age of 16 use cell phones only for short, essential calls. Just as we have warnings on cigarette packages, cell phone manufacturers are beginning to put warnings in their user manuals. Blackberry warning reads, keep the device at least 0.98 inches from your body and should not be worn or carried on the body. What do cell phones and cigarettes have in common? Both are associated with tumors. For cigarettes it is lung cancer. For cell phones it is tumors associated with the head. Now do you find this photograph disturbing? So what can you do to reduce your exposure? Minimize your use of mobile phones, and that includes cordless phones in the home. Maximize the distance from your head or body by using it in speaker mode or using it with a hollow tube headset. Don't use your phone when it is in roaming mode or when you are in a vehicle because radiation levels will be higher. Texting, texting is preferable to speaking. Those who are more vulnerable, children and pregnant women, should not use cell phones except for short, essential calls. For more information, visit these websites. Feel free to forward this presentation to those who need to know. Thank you.